Hello, and welcome to another episode of Movies That Make Us. I'm Jake. I'm Tracy. And I'm Val. Val's on the road again. On yep. the road again. She can't Just wait, can't wait to be on the road again. again. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually really one good. of my, I requested this event. It's one of my favorite events. And actually Greenwich, Connecticut is a very beautiful place. So pictures you've been like posting look fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah, I was supposed to go for a three mile little jog exploration and I ended up going five miles because I wanted to see more things. So yeah. Oh, and awesome. then I took a lift right back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> you earned it. You earned that lift. Which convention are you going? It's not a convention. It's oh. actually um it's the tour lay something something. I forgot right now because it's really late. It's a classic car gathering by Haggerty. Oh, Haggerty. Okay. Yeah, so I, I went to this one last year. I was at this event, and I went to another one last year um, in Amelia uh, Island, which is in Florida, which is also a very beautiful right. place. Mm. Um, but basically, there's going to be like a billion dollars worth of cars there this oh, weekend. Wow. People come and show their cars. They come and sell their cars. People come and look at the cars. There's new cars, classic cars, like all this. And it's right on the water. Um, and there's some really rich and famous people that pull their yachts up just to come see the show. It's, is uh, is, is the Cast of Fast and the Furious going to be there? Actually, the car from the Fast and the Furious was there last year, as nice. well as some of the Bond cars and Ooh. the real car from Ford versus Ferrari that he oh, races wow. and wins with. They had all of those um, cars cool. from that race that won last year. So it'll be interesting to see um, what they do this year. I really feel bad that I couldn't remember the, it's the Course de Elegance. That's what it okay. is. Uh, and yeah. When you've got those kind of cars, you can have that kind of name. Yeah. yeah Sounds yeah. like an event that people would pull their yachts up to. Yeah. And <laughs> and attend, right? I have to say like, Fancy. It's a really small town. Greenwich is a very small town in Connecticut, but a lot of like the people that I've ran into, I mean, I feel like New Yorkers have homes up here mm -hmm. um, because they're so close uh -huh. and the attitudes are very similar. Um, when uh -huh. I was running yesterday, um, I was trying to cross some stop lights. Um, they're just stop signs and crosswalks at a very busy area and i went right. to go and people are just going and i'm like hey and then they're like hey and they give me the finger light and i'm like i'm walking here like i really <laughs> wanted to say that but i was just like why aren't you stopping why am i in the wrong val but channels like, your dustin hoffman yeah oh, and you. uh yeah they didn't seem to like my crop top or my tattoos it was a it was very this mm. is a very um upscale well-to-do areas yeah almost yeah. all the roads that i was running through the neighborhoods led to private properties private neighborhoods you couldn't go down and mm -hmm. so as mm -hmm. i'm running and you see the neighbors they all look and there was like she doesn't belong here wait i hopefully she didn't just move in because yeah. i don't want any of that riffraff what yeah it's like but, it's that old money that's up that way instead yeah. of the like the Daisy beyond money but it yeah. was a lot of young, privileged, young people, people. with old money. Yeah, yeah, young people, old um, money. So that, that sounds but kind of beautiful. Like... <laughs> a beautiful yeah. area. So that kind of reminds me a, a little bit of the Strangers Chapter One, which we teased last week, which I won't get fully into. But when somebody goes into, they're in small town Oregon. And when the, the guy says that his girlfriend's a vegetarian and it's almost like there's a record scratch and everybody in the in the restaurant turns and looks like, what? We've never heard of such a thing. So that's kind of what that reminded me in, of. In, in small town, Oregon? Oregon? Small town, Oregon. Yeah. 
I, I would think that the record scratch would be like just a vegetarian, not like full on vegan. Maybe maybe yeah. the small towns are more old school when you yeah, get into like I guess it depends cities. on what part. Yeah. 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 But I've I've just made a really big assumption about every single person that lives in Oregon. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Well, she's getting a job. She's having a job interview. She's having a job interview in Portland and they're somewhere near Eugene, which is a college town. So you would think that they would have yeah. heard of vegetarians before. So yeah. I'm did. sure they've yeah. heard of them. They just don't like them. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that might have been. But I got to say, when the, when the killer is chopping a hole in the door. And I thought you weren't giving anything away. Well, I'm going to just say. He doesn't that. want anybody to go see this movie, so he'll spoil it. Yeah. He doesn't mind. Like no, this, is, this, is, this is just an example of how bad this movie is, right? I'm not mm -hmm. going to watch it. So it The killer matter. is literally chopping a hole in the door with, a, with an axe. And there's a window behind them. Do they try and go out the window? No. no Do not they try ever. and stop the killer chopping down the door? No. Not they ever. sit on the floor and watch it happen. And then once he's cut a perfectly square hole, perfectly square hole, then he leaves. Oh. So yeah, nobody yeah. knows what they're supposed to do in that situation, uh -huh. apparently. Yeah. All right. If you want to watch yeah. a good horror movie right now instead of that piece of poo, um, <laughs> there's <laughs> apparently that's poo. Um, we're just doing a lot of profiling this episode. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, Tracy's seen The Strangers. We haven't, but he has at least. Made, well, we haven't met every person in Oregon. Tracy says, so. it, it listen, this is million the last weekend, Tracy guys. just Ow. became a member of the Utah Film Critic Association. So now everything he says, I take to heart. And if it's not true, Aww. I'm going to be so mad at him because so, he is a so, professional. Does that does that mean when he would say stuff before he got in the into the association, yeah, you just dis discard it? Like I don't I care. care. It's I'm, just Tracy I'm already, talking. I, I'm already getting crap from Adam McDonald because I didn't think that Furiosa <laughs> was a masterpiece. So I didn't think it was wow. a masterpiece either. Adam and I don't often agree on things, and he'll message me, what did you think, just to see if maybe we agreed on something. Uh -huh. But that's also Mark that is in the association as well. I'm so excited that you're in with this kind of rat tag bunch of people, because when we all get together and have to vote, it's uh -huh. some fun, like, conversations. And But you have so much work to do, my friend. I know. So much right, work I'm ready. To do. But go. you're going to love it. You're going to love every minute of it. It's going to be good. But speaking of which, he does have a lot of work to do. So everybody should go follow Tracy on TikTok Aww. so that you can see his reviews. I'm starting. I'm, I don't have a ton up there, but I'm starting. Yep. And then now that I'm starting, it's going to go away. So thanks. Gary. Well, there's always YouTube and Instagram <laughs> that you can do that I mean, same. There's so many other socials out there. Also yeah. on our website, Tracy, hopefully you and Jake yes. will still be putting reviews on we'll there because we'll I be don't do I don't still, write any reviews anymore. Hopefully you and Jake will still be putting reviews on there. She says like, we've been putting a ton on there to begin I, with. I you have before I'm you sorry. have in the past. I have, we in, have the past. in the past. So, so, yeah. I am. I am now. Cause our next goal is to Jake in the association. Committed. Yes. <sighs> Jake, Jake has to decide if he's ready to, to make that commitment. That's where Jake <laughs> is right now. So. After Valerie's like, you've got so much work to do. Yeah, well, and it is. It's like <laughs> there's a lot that you have to do. Yeah. And I just have to be ready to make that commitment. And right, right. So yeah. I haven't pursued it because I'm being on you the fence and lukewarm. Yeah. So you you have a lot of stuff going on. So we Well, can... I know, but I don't think that's fair because everybody has a lot of stuff going on. So it's not fair to say yeah, but, but I like no, Jake, you have six kids I and all zero. of those kids have like extracurricular activities that they like to do mm -hmm, they're sure. out there like in the world they're not sitting at home watching right. video games all they're, the time they're they literally traveling sports. the world they travel like <laughs> your kids are are kind of like above average in like yeah. to like doing things and yeah, i think well, that maybe. you and your wife you you're supportive of it you mm -hmm. you push them to do things you're not absentee parents and you're not helicopter no. parents. You, you're like this magical, like middle ground. Totally. There should be like a TLC, HTGV, whatever show about your no. family. 
But don't no. do that because it ruins every family. Yeah, every I don't marriage. want. So I have don't do it. Zero I'm desire. Just saying, I'm just saying, like you should be on those so people can it's, like learn how it's, to be. It's not the first time someone's recommended that. You know, hey, you've got three deaf kids, three hearing kids. That'd make a great TLC series. And I said, I'm, no, <laughs> it wouldn't. I mean, maybe it would, but not my family. Hypothetically, that might be a good idea, but yeah. in execution, that's going to be a little. No, I I need to come up with a plan for how I want to approach if I want to get into the into the association. What I can do to make that happen. So, uh, I I feel I feel like uh, I I got to catch up to you guys now. So, <laughs> I mean, I feel like uh, you don't have to catch up to me very. Often. I need to. I have been slacking on actually writing reviews um, because I'm just like I'm taking the easy road and just being on TV. Um, so I feel like that's enough, but really I'm supposed to be writing them. So at yeah. least one a week. So I need to catch up. Um, so, but I did want to say, cause I did tell everybody like what horror film to go and check out. And oh, now yes. my brain is, is, is it done. The, the serial killer point of view. Uh... Yes. And I have, I don't know why I can't find it. As soon as I find it halfway through the show. Oh, uh, In a Violent Nature. So yes. In a Violent yes. Nature, I saw at Sundance. Um, and I went to see it with uh, Mark, our friend um, from Visually Stunning Podcast. And I usually see at least two to three horror films there. I'm not a horror film like Slasher fan, but their horror thrillers Um are I've I've had a good time over the last four years watching them. And this one I was like, I don't know. It's gonna be a slasher. And then it comes on and you're watching it from the killer's point of view. And like you said, Tracy, the killer is there as as a person that's being chased, we always see it from their point of view. And the killer right. is always there no matter how fast and how far you run. Like it's always there. But in this one we see it from his point of view and it takes him forever to get there like forever. <laughs> and I was just walking and walking and I don't know if they put, I talked about this early in the year on here. I don't know if they put like um, sound like mics on his shoes. Cause it's so crunchy forever. So when I first started watching it, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, I don't know. It's this so is like, it's annoying. It's taking forever. And then I was like, Oh, I see what they're doing. And it became very interesting. And I do want to kind of go behind the scenes on that one and really see how they made it. But it has one of the most creative killing scenes in a movie that I have ever seen. And even though th halfway through the scene, I was like this, I right. still knew what was happening because of the noises that the killer, <laughs> that the actual like murder was happening like the noises uh -huh. i was like oh i know exactly even though so i'm the, not looking at it so the foley yeah. artist had a great time on this movie yes 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 so <laughs> if you're in if you're into interesting like different kind of movies and you you don't mind gore yeah then go see this in theaters because just the crunchiness of this film all around in the, in the dolby surround in the, in the th theater <laughs> Is an experience. Is an experience. Yeah. So I actually gave it. I actually gave it a B plus, and I don't wow. use horror films B no, pluses. But it was just so interesting and such a different point of view. And then just the technical aspects is so like I just want to find out how. I wish I could have been like on set for it just to see how they did everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it's like from a technical nerdy kind of aspect and like weird kid kind of aspect. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's for everybody who ever wanted to be a serial killer. You yeah, know, now you absolutely. can who didn't want to be a Oh, on. didn't want to be. I thought it was from his point of view though, or her point of view. Equal I mean, right. did. Everybody did. Anyway. No Tracy. <laughs> Not everybody. <laughs> I'm so confused right now where we were going with that. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> well, That's speaking kind of, of cutting edge insight, you can only get from me. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we interrupt this episode of MTMU Confessional because we've all been talking about all the things we haven't been doing well lately uh, to bring you your regularly scheduled programming. Uh, we're talking about the Goonies tonight. Yay. I was going to. Our 
Yeah, up there it's their time, but down here it's our time. Sean Austin. He is really good in this movie. Like even watching it back, you know, all these years later, mm-hmm. he does a really, really great job for how young he is, and all of the actors do. I mean, Richard Donner really oh. brings out the best in these actors mm-hmm. in this movie. Mm-hmm. It's just really, really well done. So, uh, and that's it. It, it you know, should we great? <laughs> just kidding. We'll talk more. <laughs> I mean, this is this is like this came out when I was ten, so I grew up with this movie and this like Mm -hmm. i kind of miss this type of of movie where you have like real danger for the kids like mama fratelli yeah brothers are like intense like yeah they are the it's kind of like indiana jones light for kids with the whole booby traps and the you know it was this i don't know you don't we kind of we kind of like water down the kids in danger not that we should have kids in danger, but you know, we but, just don't. The, the, but in the eighties, in the eighties, like there was danger around every corner. So if you're true. a kid, you're thinking that because of all the movies that you've watched, and of course, your parents don't help because they're like the everybody's ads. waiting to just throw you in the car or yeah. right. give you poison candy at Halloween time. Well, and our parents yeah, just that's let when us Stranger whatever, Danger too. started. And yeah. that's that's the Gen X parent. They were like, the, our our parents were like, okay, we'll go do whatever, and we'll see you at sunset. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have phones. It's okay that it's or... the year of serial killers and stranger danger and all of that, but go Don't out. Don't worry about it. As yeah, soon as fine. you whistle, come home, or like if once the street lights go on. But it was great. Like I had a great time, but I wasn't like murdered or kidnapped. So it was fun. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, really quick, just to, for those that aren't familiar with Richard Donard's um, background. So, he directed The Omen, Superman, Superman 2. The Toy, The Goonies, Lady Hawk, Lethal Weapon, Scrooge, Lethal Weapon 2, Lethal Weapon 3, Maverick, Assassins, Lethal Weapon 4, and Superman 2, The Donner Cut. I mean, that's a... Yeah. Oh, he also did we X-Men. We could do two uh, months of just his X-Men movies. Wolverine. There was um, at least I, six I, movies you listed in there that I love. love. Yeah. Believe it or not, I had heard of Richard Donner before I watched this movie. Uh <laughs> As a Superman fan, I was yeah. familiar. Yeah, um, he's he. And what's interesting as you read through that list is there's a lot of different types of movies on that list, and a lot of them that you've heard of that are pretty decent, pretty good movies. I mean, right. Maverick is very different than Superman. Yeah. Is very different than The Goonies. Is very different than The Omen. But those are all movies I think that did well and were. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen The Omen, so I can't say that, but that were enjoyable. It's, it, but you know of it, and you know yes. that it's very famous. It's highly thought of, yes. Right, so. right. I, yeah, I used to watch up. The Toy all the time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And most people probably don't remember that movie, but I used to watch it so much. Probably shouldn't have. I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to remember which one the toy was because I I keep thinking of toys with Robin Williams and I know that's not right. That's no, it's Pryor. it's not. So Richard Pryor is Richard basically Pryor. Okay. hired by like a hoity-toity family from Greenwich, Connecticut. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just Ironic. Um, no, Jackie it has Gleason. Jackie Gleason. Um, yeah. and he's basically hired to be his son's like toy like present he has to do whatever his son wants him to do and then his son has this epiphany like halfway through that he's a human and he is his friend and he's like the only one that actually pays attention to him because everyone else is his fan in his family is too busy doing things but they he also has some of the most fantastic toys in the world in this house because they just buy him everything and say go do whatever and so he actually wants someone to play with and richard Pryor is the person and so yeah yeah it's also a little racist now that I think about it. Oh, yeah, when like I as you were going, I'm like, this is when I was really kid, bad optics. But I used to watch it. But I think it's also a learning opportunity because yeah, they treated sure. the son and Richard Pryor in a certain way. And then by the end of the movie, they humanized both the kid and Richard Pryor in a time where kids weren't taken seriously and neither were people like Richard Pryor. Like literally because mm-hmm, yeah. he's a comedian, but also like, you know, racism and stuff. So yeah, right. 
I need to watch it again. I'm sure a lot of it doesn't hold up, but all the parts that I can think of were really funny or heartfelt. Uh-huh. Yeah. But it, it's interesting, Tracy, you mentioned that you kind of miss these kind of stories. And I think a lot of people do because I think that was part of the success behind Stranger Things yeah. um, and behind, you know, uh, TV series, The Goldbergs they did oh, a whole yeah. episode based on the Goonies. And I think it's because people miss, I mean, kids in danger, but there's a certain innocence to this. Right. And there's a certain, like as a kid watching it, it's like, yeah, I can do cool stuff. Like I could find the treasure of one eyed Willie, which is a horrible name, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I never, yeah. I didn't I just, think of that until you just said it just now. Well, I don't know why I never I'm, thought of it till this now, but I, yeah. Yeah. But it's funny that Jake brought it up and not one of us. Well, that's, that's his mom's favorite part. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, she would prefer that we, we called him uh, just. Oh, what I, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if my mom's even seen the Goonies or if she even likes the Goonies. I'm just going to throw that out there. Mom, if you're listening, chime in. Leave a comment. Let us know your favorite part of the Goonies. Is it One-Eyed Willie? I, we just want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. I, I don't even know where we're going with that. But... Uh, Apologies. I really liked... I really liked... <laughs> I felt like that was like a... It's your mom's favorite part. Yeah, I, mom I know what I really, really like That's is I really is like beautiful. I really like Sean Astin's mom in the movie. Um, yeah, she's yeah. not really in the movie a whole lot, but I really, um, I like that she's real. They have a mm -hmm. lot going on. She's a single mom, um, and I, who played her? I really liked her. Yeah, it, it's interesting because parents were very different in these movies in the eighties, they seemed more real. I mean, mm -hmm. nowadays you see parents in, in kids very themed very centric important. movies and they're very like not there. And you just wonder what are they even like, what do they even do to have all of these things and houses, whatever. But like you think about ET, you've got Elliot's mom in that e. who's very real. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you've got the mom in this who's very real karate kid. The mom is very real. Like yeah. I remember like, struggling financially as a family and like the times when we couldn't go out and do stuff and things like that, that it's very reminiscent of these movies that I watch that I'm like, yeah, that was what my childhood was like, aside from obviously some of the stuff that happens in the movies, but, but it just feels more real and more lived in the world that they yeah. create. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the cast in this, I mean, you've got Sean Astin, Josh Brolin, Corey Feldman, K. Huai Kwan. I, Sorry, I probably oh, totally butchered his name. Um, Martha Plimpton, Joe Pantoliano, who ended up being in The Matrix. That's one of his most famous roles. Um, mm -hmm. And Ramsey with Mama Fratelli. I mean, there's yeah. just so many people that it's like, it's kind of like when you watch The Outsiders and then you mm -hmm. later realize, because at the time there were a bunch of no names and then later you're like, oh my gosh, they were in that. Yeah. yeah, I actually watched that about a month ago on the plane on one of my trips and it still holds up and it's so sad. Like when I was younger and uh -huh. watched it, I didn't realize how just, and I read the book and it was like, when mm -hmm. you're a kid, you kind of know, but now when I watch it as an adult, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like it's just horrifyingly sad. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. again, all of these movies were made around the same time. And like mm -hmm. you said, it's all of these kids going through these serious things in life. And then all of a sudden we hit, like the late 80s, early 90s, and everything had to be pristine and pretty and don't think about actual real life. Um, and then kids started not seeing their lives on TV, you know, because back yeah. in the 50s and 60s, you couldn't have any divorced parents. Like right. you couldn't okay. have a single mom. And then we jumped into the mm -hmm. 70s and 80s. And it's a lot of those stories. And then we jump into the 90s and it goes right back, you know, to where it used to be. And so I just think these mm -hmm. movies were seriously relatable to have, you know, a yeah. single mom and then to have like a housekeeper because she couldn't keep up on it, yeah. you know, and I thought it was just yeah. a lot of really good elements in this very well, small town. And there's so much that are affecting these kids. You have like the foreclosure of the house and they're going to have to move and they're going to break up the, 
the group and then you've got the Fratellis threatening to throw the kid's hand into a blender and chop off yeah. his tongue. And I mean, there's yeah. like some real. Yeah. The, the amount of threatened maiming that happens in this movie is ridiculous. <laughs> like this is why our parents told us not to talk to strangers because they might put your hand in a blender. You just don't know. <laughs> But I've heard that the the upcoming Star Wars TV series, and I don't remember what it's called, but it's with a bunch of kids, um, and it's being directed by the guy who did the Spider-Man movies, I believe. And mm. they said one of their influences was the Goonies. So let's hope. But. We can hope. I just don't know why it doesn't always work. Like they try to put the formula together and it just doesn't always work. And I don't know what's missing, but it just seems like all of the ingredients are here. Mm -hmm. And it just works so well. And so maybe it's like, you know, you've got a great pizza that's got all your favorite toppings and it's just perfect. And somebody else makes a similar pizza, but they leave out some of the toppings and it's just something spoofing. This is the thing I Only want, in San I want to I wanna quote. I want to quote Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Right. Do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. this is the thing. Why it doesn't always work. Okay, well, we got... You know, we got influenced by the Goonies. I hope it's just an influence by the Goonies, you know, plus like your own thing. Because if you're trying to remake something that was original at the time, that's why it worked so well. It was original. It's something right. we hadn't seen before. And now you're trying to recreate these moments. Create your own moment. Like mm -hmm. you can still yeah. make something that that you like because when you were a kid, you liked these type of stories. Right, um, and then they pull people in because they're like, "Oh, well, we were influenced by the Goonies, and that's going to grab a certain audience that's looking mm -hmm. for that." But now I have an expectation right. of that, right? right? So it can be good and bad comparing what you have. And when you make a movie, when you're trying to get it made and you have to produce it, you have to give ten comparables in your right. pitch. They have mm -hmm. to know because they're not going to give you money on a new idea that's right. not comparable to something else which is totally stupid but i get it they want to know they're going to make money right. so it's this weird circle of let's cross our fingers and see if it works out because back in the 80s they didn't care about comparables they just were throwing money at everything some of it was good <laughs> some of it was really 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 well, bad it helps when you've got steven spielberg a tap attached to the project That's as well. A nice name to have attached. Yeah. yeah. And like Richard Donner who had done Superman. And I think yeah. they could say, this yeah. is what we're doing. And if Steven came yeah. in and said, this is what we're doing, they'd be like, sure, here's the checkbook, <laughs> right, whatever you need. Like, now now they're, the kids. Yeah. yeah. They're just announcing that his next movie is going to come out in 2025 and they don't know what it is yet. They're just saying, Hey, get ready. Cause Steven Spielberg's going to have another movie. They, they next said it has year. something to do with UFOs. That's all we know so far. Yeah, that's it. So, so they just hand him checks. But yeah, right. so I'm, you know, I'm excited to see it's okay that we have a Star Wars movie. There's a lot of Star Wars stuff coming out. Like the Alkalite um, mm -hmm. starts next Tuesday. We're going to be talking about that um, on the show. Um, and like, I'm excited to see it mainly because they haven't said it's like anything else. Yeah. It's something yeah. different. Mm -hmm. And I haven't read the books, so I'm not deep into, you know, everything else that's going on. So as a fan, I'm just excited right. to see something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I have mixed feelings on the Star Wars books and comics, and I just feel like you shouldn't have to read everything in this really yeah. intricately detailed universe in order to understand everything that's going on and i realize the hypocrisy of saying that as i'm sitting in front of all of my brandon sanderson books <laughs> of the cosmere and his yeah, intricate I, connected I, universe it, but that's where it started but, was in the books but I, yeah but i feel like if they were gonna go and make brandon sanderson movies and then all of a sudden they started jumping into the fan fiction because guess what guys that's what the star wars books are they're mm -hmm. all fan fiction. Yeah, they get fans that can write well, and they mm -hmm. write the books just like D and D, and they throw them on the shelves. So fans are creating these universes. These universes go forever and ever this way and that way. So yeah. it can be whatever. But then you have like super fanatic fans that come out and anyway, Star Wars fans can keep you, your crap together. You're bugging the crap out of me. Can you let your friend Kevin know? 
Tracy, that that Val feels like he just writes fan fiction. Yeah, he's, he's got a Star Wars trilogy that he wrote. You, he will tell you that he is a fanboy, but yes, I know. Yeah, he but, would, but he wouldn't be he offended. I don't think. Writing, when he yeah. started writing, he started writing because he was a fan that well, wanted to add well, on to the universe. I mean, his. I was going to say back then you could do it and come up with a story yeah. and write it, and then they would publish yeah. it because it yeah. didn't have to fit into this intricate puzzle. Right. Yeah, but it's yeah. still called fan fiction. George yeah. Lucas did not write it, thank goodness, but he didn't write it. <laughs> We wouldn't have so many. And once you're an established had. writer, it's still fan fiction. It's I fiction know. for the fans. Written by... Anyway. Anyway. Um, so, I don't put them down. They're writers. They're doing more yeah. than I am about it. And I love that people enjoy it. But right. um, it's a make-believe place that can have whatever you want happen in it. Mm -hmm. Well, I bought a book today. That I'm actually going to read. Speaking about right. reading, <laughs> this episode. My therapist where are we going? said. My therapist said, if my me if I want my memory to get better, which we all want my memory to get better. <laughs> sure. That I I need to actually read books instead of listen to them. Okay. Yeah, your therapist is full of baloney. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's probably true. She's not a fan. She's not a fan therapist. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a vote yeah. right now <laughs> i don't know i i'm a big proponent of listening to books because that's how i can get books read but well that's there's probably benefit same, to reading them same yeah. but she said like your comprehension in actually reading from the page helps your memory that's why they do it yeah, in school like read this true. can you comprehend it can you hold on to the information can then you go tell somebody about it it's that whole thing because i listen to so many books and yeah. watch movies and i don't use the other side of my brain that has the writing so and the yeah. reading i i just have decided i'm gonna offend everybody in oregon <laughs> all therapists <laughs> i'm just yeah, going for it today tonight. everybody we're just all, each gonna but, take a turn and the amazing thing about that is if i'm going to offend people and you've talked all about star wars i have not said one thing about the star wars fanboys which is impressive for me that is that is very true so so, they hate me all um, they want. So, <laughs> I've gone out on more dates than they have. So their, their hatred is delicious. Hmm. Cry those angry tears. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you though. So do you guys? This is kind of kind of coming back on subject, but still. Oh, that's I'll, good. Um, Thank you. Did you guys ever go to Classic Water Slides? On yes, South? I worked you, there. You worked at Classic. No, I worked at the other one, but it's pretty much oh, like okay. they're all the same. But yeah. Yes. So yeah. We, we used to get season passes or summer passes to the water slides at Classic. And there's only four of them. You yeah. Know, that was that was our summer thing. And after I saw the Goonies, especially the part with the with the little water slide through the tunnels, then for a whole summer, that was my imagination was that I was a Goonie Aww, that's going cool. down the slides and going to find fall into the into the pool and find one eyed Willie's treasure. Yeah. Well, just and I still mind. think if you had a themed water slide like that, that would be pretty cool, uh -huh. like a pirate themed water. I, slide. I can't help it, Val. I'm not going to say it. I'm just not going to say it. I didn't even think about it until your face. You are usually I'm like the dirty one, and tonight it's I'm not. I... You're so yeah. Dirty. Yeah, I'm you struggling are. tonight. I'm struggling tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, what was your favorite? What was your favorite scene from the movie? Probably the Mine piano. Mine is when the piano. Explain that scene. With the just the organ and the floors yeah. collapsing. I just thought, like as a yeah. kid, I'm like, I don't know how to play the piano. I'd be screwed. You know, like how would yeah. you figure that out? Yeah. Yeah. What about you, what Jake? We I enjoy so much Chunk and Sloth and their interactions, <laughs> but I think when he's locked up initially with Sloth and oh, he starts yeah. bouncing his chair and Sloth thinks that they're playing a game, so he starts bouncing his chair and you can see how they're starting to connect and just build that relationship. And then you find out he's strong enough to just pull himself out of the chains. And I'm like, why was he just sitting there? Because that's what he's been trained yeah, to do. Yeah, that's who he is. That's who he's he is. called yeah. gaslighting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> Home syndrome, all of the... um, 
No, I like the scene too with them when they figure out they have to go down the grate to like get in. Oh, oh yeah. With the water. Like, I just love that because to me, I was just like, I never would have thought about that if I ever get stuck somewhere, like uh -huh. how, how to get out of these situations. I was just mm -hmm. always like, I loved the movies where you watched like the villain tie somebody to the tracks and you're like, how are they going to get out? And they end up like getting out and like, just, I don't know, like the, I don't know. I just, I've always been just like, how do you get out of this situation? And I right, thought it was right. so fun that they had to do that. And they went down there. I'm like, how did they fit down there? They didn't fit down there. Yeah. I, I love the part where she kisses Mikey. That part oh, was yeah. hilarious. And she, cause she thinks it's brand and because yeah. she's doing it with her eyes closed and her friend knows that it's Mikey, but she doesn't know. And then she's like, I didn't know Brand had braces. And he must <laughs> be careful because there's a hole around here because he must have been standing in that hole because he was shorter than she remembered yeah. him being. <laughs> like the way she justified all of it. Yeah. Yeah. I love the ice cream part too. Yes. 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 I love the ice cream part so much. There, there's just so many scenes. And like we mentioned earlier, the scene in the in the well where he's like, this is my wish. I'm taking it back. Like that kind yeah. of thing. Like you wouldn't necessarily get that in a kid's movie these days. Like it would just be about yeah. like throwing a fart joke, you know, yeah. slapstick yeah. here instead of having this emotional yeah. real moment. Yeah. The, the interactions between the kids are so real. Like when mm -hmm. they yell together, like, shut up, Mikey, shut up. <laughs> like whoever it is that they're yelling at, because they yell at all, all of them at some point or another. And yeah. like, yeah, I remember doing that with my friends. Shut up. You're dumb. You know, and it's just, dumb. yeah, but they didn't have to drop to the level of the fart humor. They didn't have to drop to the level. Of, like they didn't dumb it down. I don't right, think. Right. Yeah, it's and a, they it, all had like really good monologues. It wasn't just like yeah. one lighters. Yes, there are some good quotes, but I love when Chunk just has his confession. It reminds oh my me gosh. Of, it reminds it reminds me of Pena um when you're yes. in Ant Man. Like yes. I feel uh -huh. like he could took it from Chunk, uh -huh. but I just love, he just keeps going and going and going and he oh. just emotes all of the energy. And I'm like, this kid is freaking yeah. amazing. <laughs> Tell us everything. <laughs> all right, so the third <laughs> grade, I'm heart. like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I do but that's my, a kid, right? That's a and kid, they're not. My face, and I played yeah. Moses in my Hebrew class. The thing I feel the worst about is when I made the homemade vomit at home. Fake vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if retching sounds bother you. I apologize for that, but it's too late. We already did it. So good. Like to get yeah. that kid, you can't get adult actors to be yeah. that good in a scene. Yeah. Like yeah. phenomenal. And I and I love the fact too, it's a longer take. So they didn't like do a bunch yeah. of cuts to get like he yeah, just... that's what I'm saying. Like his monologue yeah. is yeah, he he's really phenomenal in this, and I mean, he, he plays that role so well. The klutzy, dumb kid that he plays is just—it's perfect. When he runs out and he stops the car and he's telling him about the Fratelli brothers, and oh, like, God. I can describe them to you. Take me to the sheriff. And then the great thing about that is then the car light pops on, and you see the Fratelli brother in the mirror. Like, yeah, the way they film that is so good. And then I love the fact too, the next shot, the Fratelli brother is like singing along with the opera and the focus is on him. And in the background, you see Chunk fighting to get locked into the, into the car. And he's like, no, no. And they're like slowly trying to push him in the car. <laughs> yep. It's, it's well done. All of so the he, uh, Let's see. Jeff Cohn. After this, he did ask Max, a TV movie. He did the voice of the grunt in Scooby-Doo and the ghoul school. And then uh, Perfect Harmony, a TV movie. And then he did some TV work. He did an episode of Webster, an episode Ooh. of The Facts of Life, an ep two episodes of Family Ties, two episodes of Amazing Stories. He really Stories, got around in the 80s to like all the things. One episode of The Wonderful World of Disney, and then that was it. Yeah. I I think he he may have suffered from, from typecasting after this he, because... He became an entertainment lawyer from yeah. uh, to Berkeley. Wow. So, 
He's uh, He was named the Hollywood Reporter's Next Generation, Hollywood's top 35 executives under 35. Wow, good for wow. him. So, and then he negotiated, this is cool, guys. He negotiated the deal <laughs> of his Goonies, Goonies co-star, K.Y. Kwan, for his casting in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Oh, and nice. Wow. I love that so much. Speech, calling him his Goonies brother for life. Oh, he negotiated the so deal much. for his friend that got an Oscar. That's cool. I That's love awesome. that. It's kind of like the cast of Sandlot. Like they're all really good yeah. friends still and they mm -hmm. hang out and they look out for each other. And I just love that. That's yeah. really cool. Thanks, Wikipedia. Wikipedia <laughs> saves the day. <laughs> it's not like Google AI that'll tell you that it's okay to cook rocks. <laughs> I this this thing is just all over. AI is everywhere now. And I'll be honest, it's I'm right not here. About it's it. right here. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, right I'm not just, yeah, it probably is. But like I've noticed on Facebook, when you get to a post that's got a ton of comments, and you yeah. click comments, it will tell you like a summary of all the comments. I'm like, this does not make me mad because I don't have to read through to see what everybody thinks. I just have to read this. This is fantastic. <laughs> I just think it's funny. Does it ever say this is all a bunch of gibberish, gibberish move on? No, it hasn't said that yet. Oh, oh man, that'd be nice. Yeah, that would be good. but but Google will do the same thing. When you search for something on Google, it'll bring up all the results and it'll say, here's a summary oh, of... Yeah, now it's trying to answer the question for you instead of giving you... Yeah. And the which answer, is, it's giving which you... Which is good because that, that oh, 10 yeah. seconds extra now that I can save by not having to click another site to get my answer. But it's telling people it's okay to snort bath salts and it's okay to eat rocks. And so Google's pulling back because it's obviously... Yeah. Not yeah. 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 I always get, I get it. When, like, do you want to fix your grammar? And I'm like, no, I know exactly what I did here. And I don't AI. I don't want you to fix my grammar. Yeah. Yeah. They think you do though. You know, if you had AI when they were trying to find one eyed Willie. Oh my gosh. If you had like a Google map that could take you to the pirate boat, that'd be a lot easier than than banging on the pipes. And Maybe that's it. why we don't get good movies like this anymore because it's just not as much fun. <laughs> like you, you are a hundred feet away from the treasure. <laughs> Instead of banging on the pipes and ruining the country club. Which was completely realistic, obviously. The, the, the drinking fountain going up and down and the guy getting knocked completely head over heels. That was That was great. As I was re-watching it and, and Data falls into the hole and he shoots up his uh, pinchers of peril or power yes. or whatever yes. and the mouth I goes up and so latches on and he's just sitting there bouncing after that. I'm like, <laughs> this would never happen. And I stopped myself. I'm like, wait, that's the one part of this movie that that was just too far. That just pushed you over the edge that you're like. And so I turned that part of my brain off and just enjoyed the rest of the movie after that. <laughs> the, the oil squirting out of his shoes. No, that was fine. But the minute he used the little chomper teeth thing to save his life, I was like, no. False shattering teeth. That's too much. I'm out. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I got back in, though. It was fine. <laughs> Is that going to affect your grade? No, not at all. Okay. All right, all right. Sometimes, sometimes you have to watch a movie and be like, that's what this movie is, and right. I just have to enjoy that that's what this mm -hmm. movie is. And that was the 80s. Yeah. 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 Like, like finding now if you all the put stuff that... on the ship. Yeah. And then she's like, like, give me everything you found. And then he spits out, like they pull, you know, the necklace out of his mouth and he's spitting all that. And I'm just like, again, yeah. like, yeah, but it's it, great. But it's nobody had to tell us as kids that that was a choking hazard, that you shouldn't really put a necklace in your mouth. <laughs> now that or that you should try to rely on, on chomping teeth to save you if you fall down a hole. Like, yeah, you know what no, we should do though. We should do a road trip together and go up to Oregon because you can see the the stone, but you can also go visit the jail where the Fratellis were held. Yeah, at the beginning I was of the so movie. close to the house, and I didn't go see the house, and I should have. Yeah, I don't know what town it is, but I know it's in Oregon. It's Astoria, yeah. I believe. Oh, I think you're right. I think it is Astoria. Yeah, Astoria. Yeah, I think so. But it's yeah, it's one of my favorite cities. We've We've driven through there and stopped there a few times on different trips, and it's beautiful. It's also I, where Kindergarten Cop was was oh, uh, based. I love oh. that movie. So I haven't seen that one. Not a Puma. 
<laughs> what does your dad do? Not going to repeat it, but it's my favorite, oh. one of my favorite lines <laughs> of a movie my ever. Dad, my computer programming analyst? I don't, I don't know why that <laughs> has to do with the movie, but. Exactly the one I was talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know what your guys' obsession is with my parents tonight. Tracy's obsessed are, with my mom. Val's obsessed with my dad. What is going on? Where you came from? Where you, we need to know your. We need a prequel. We need a backstory. No, we don't. Listen, you know how I feel about prequels. They they never work. Never ever. Yeah, Furiosa continued that trend, unfortunately. But I had high hopes for you because I know how much you like the Mad Max it, series. It, it's hard just because like Fury Road is like a plus amazing and then like if this had come first you'd be like wow that was really good but when you compare it to that then you're like eh, it just didn't live up but but yeah. you know i'm hoping that they don't ever remake the goonies because this is like just create something new leave these things alone but i'm sure somebody's going to try and mine it sometime somewhere but well they've done if there's they do, been... I'm gonna make sure i'm out of town that weekend so that you have to go see it didn't they do a sequel like in the early 90s I don't know that I don't they know. I don't know that they did a sequel, but there's always been talk of doing a sequel. Yeah. And I think that's a horrible idea. Cause I, I can't think of the right way to do a sequel to the Goonies at this point. You either do it where it is forty years later and they're all grown up and their kids are getting into trouble or something. Be okay. Getting Sean Astin and Josh Brolin and all okay, those guys back together. Tracy, Ghostbusters Afterlife. That's what it would be like is Ghostbusters Afterlife, but for the Good Goonies. Point. Good point. That would be my fear. And they then I tried to yeah. remake the Goonies, um, but it's the one episode of the one movie that we all hated and we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of what was in the Goonies they tried to create in that movie. That's true. And yeah. like all the kids together. And then the ending was totally the ending of the Goonies. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Ready Player One mm -hmm. is what we're talking about, people. Yeah, that's for those that about. don't know the movie that we don't talk about, that's the movie. We do not discuss. It's the Voldemort of movies that make us. Yeah, but so every time we don't mention the name, we're just giving it more power. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to bring it up again. It's all right. It's all right. Like once a but, season. By the way, is this season five? Are we starting season five? Or I don't know. Tonight we, is season we, five. Tonight is, is season game. five. This is the this is our episode. season. This is, is our season, season premiere, five. guys. Season five <laughs> premiere happening right now. We've Just planned this out. We've thought hard about it. We are. This is so it. This is the thing. Tracy and I had talked about it in advance because he had to know how many years that he'd been doing this. And I said, we've been doing it five years and four seasons. And I said, maybe this week we should start our fifth season. <laughs> because like, and I think it's been up to me because I like upload it into the thing. And I say the season is in the episode. Mm, yeah. So I've made the call. This is the first episode of season. Five. Welcome aboard. If Perfect. you have five, four previous seasons for you to catch up yeah. on. And, and because this is our season premiere, that's why we picked such a stellar movie as yeah, The Goonies. Yes. So because exactly. everybody, I don't know anybody that does not like this movie or have good memories of this movie. I don't either. Like people that grew up watching it, especially, it's always fond memories that yeah. they have. And, and if, if you're like 18 or something and you're just joining us and you haven't seen this movie, go check it out. It's a ton of fun. And you can it see is. what all of us like grew up on. That's the kind of stuff yeah. that we enjoy. This, this is what we did before we had screens that were constantly able to be in our faces. So right, right. we had to go out and find treasure. That's what, <laughs> what we did. Sometimes it was just so. dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you told your parents it was treasure and it was just a rock. But, but to you. Yeah. yeah. It, it was like, I, dug this up. It was like so I found this. Yeah. <laughs> you wash it off on the, the hose in the yard yeah. and, Put it in mm -hmm. your little collector's box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a box of cool rocks when I was growing up. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I still and have a box of cool rocks. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. You don't have to sound embarrassed. <laughs> I'm not. I just think it's funny that I have boxes of rocks I, I, when I was a kid still. I had, I had a cigar box that my granddad had given me to uh -huh. put my treasures in. 
including the gold nugget that he had given me that Ooh. I found out years later was just fool's gold. But wow. I thought it was real gold. Why? Because my granddad said it was real gold. And so yeah. that was the first time that I learned that he was a liar. So <laughs> did, did this happen a lot? Did he lie to you? Yes, all the time? It, it actually did happen a lot, but that's not what we're talking about. Mom, again, if you're listening, I'm really Prequel. sorry. Prequel. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I do. I was a huckster. I I like I like this movie. I like the nostalgia of it. I remember you mentioned going out and just being out all day. And I remember, you know, as a kid, we'd go out. I had a friend who had this like treehouse thing that we had a rope that we would a rope swing that hung off of it. We'd pull the trampoline under the rope swing, pull the rope up into the treehouse, and then jump on the rope onto the trampoline. If I saw my kids do that today, I would kill them. If they survive, because I'm pretty sure they would die. <laughs> but I was doing it all the time, like no problem. We didn't my have other friend, helmets. Oh we, no! I mean, we did. Uh-uh. I didn't wear them. We had them. No, before. nobody wore a bike helmet. Well, no. bike helmet back then was like a thin piece of plastic. It's like not like now, where it's like molded and it's got all sorts of testing yeah. done. And if, if your friend was wearing a bike helmet, you're like, oh, he, his parents are overprotective. He can't have fun. He's not allowed to have fun. <laughs> After like After. my seventh or eighth fall, like down the hill in our neighborhood, you guys have been in my neighborhood, there's this really like uh-huh. far hill and I would either be on it on a skateboard or my rollerblades. And after I fell a few times, my mom was like, you need to put these knee pads on or you're not going to have knees anymore. So I'd wear them for a little bit. And then I don't know how they got lost. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. My mom used to buy us a corduroys that had the, the oh. built-in uh, knee protector inside the fabric. Yeah. Because we'd go through jeans so wow. fast. Wow. Fancy. Yeah. It, it was have to really be careful. hot during the summer, but that's what we had to wear. I, I was a bigger kid, and corduroy was dangerous. I could start a fire if I ran too fast in corduroy. I think corduroy <laughs> was dangerous for everybody, and now it's coming yeah. back, and I'm just like, I don't oh, it is? All right. It, oh, it's it funny you talk about the the knee pads on your bike that disappeared. I was at the store with Ben the other day, and we his birthday's coming up, and I showed him the bikes that they had, and I said, maybe we can get you a bike this year. And he was like, that would be cool. He said, but I would need a helmet. I said, sure, let's look at the helmets. We picked some out that he thought were cool. He's like, I'd probably need knee pads as well, and probably even shoulder pads in case I fell. I'm like, okay, shoulder listen, pads, they don't, they don't make pads. shoulder pads for... <laughs> We're just biking in the neighborhood, kids. He's just biking around in a football uniform. <laughs> so, but I want to be that safe be while I'm riding awesome. my bike. And I'm like, my kids are so fragile. <laughs> you need to push them over every once in a while. <laughs> I'm not going to push my kids over. Just like a little I'll, nudge. Listen, next time next time you're around, now, if you want to push my kids over, you're totally welcome to. Witness. I don't want to do that, but if you want to. Just a little nudge. It's just a little nudge. It's not like really hard pushing them over. Just a little, little nudge you gotta, nudge. You got to give them a, a Spider-Man helmet. That's what you need. The only ones that they had were too small. Uh, but he, he thought those were cool. He also right. thought the Spider-Man bike was really cool, but those are like for three and four-year-olds. I'm like, you're oh. definitely too old for that, my I friend. Still <laughs> Sorry. It. We'll just come over. At Val, Val's a makeup artist. She could paint something. She's got artistic skill. Uh, I can't. Being a makeup artist and painting something on a bike are two totally different things. Dave, I'm, Dave I'm could credit. paint something on the bike. Sammy could paint something on the bike. I could paint something on the bike. It's not going to be anything good. But if you want me to put pretend like gashes in his face, I that can do that. Cool. Totally oh, different yeah, then kind of art. Like come home totally different like, kind Dad, of art. Dad, what happened? That'd be cool. That yeah. pushed me over. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that has to happen now. <laughs> that Val has to push my kid over? <laughs> and with fake makeup. Oh, okay. Yeah. With the makeup. Yeah. You pick it and I'll just surprise him. <laughs> hey, Chad, I don't know. come here. <laughs> I, I've got a real picture of you guys trying to push over Jack. Well, that Jack's not fair. He's got two cats on his feet and he's barely standing up on his own. I don't think we should push yeah, Jack. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's a bad movie scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the kid in yeah. the cast that then goes tumbling down the stairs. 
That's it's been done. It's, I don't wonder. If yeah, it's been done. yeah. Johnny, we could try to push him though. He's he could okay. take it. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. We like a challenge. We're good. The older, I mean, Ben's small. Ben's young. So he's yeah, not... Ben. Ben's easy to push around. But I feel like yeah. that's when you have to start getting them tough, because then yeah. they grow up tough. If you try to get them tough in the middle, then you're just a bully. Mm. All right, Ben. It is. It's been decided. We just need to play a couple games of um, dodgeball and Red Rover, Red Rover, and kids will be fine. They need to learn how to lose and how to fall over and how to get hit by oh, things. Yeah. That that meme yeah. about how you can't hear a sound and then they have the picture of the of the of the ball from uh, dodgeball. Yeah, yeah, I can hear that every yeah. time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just like every time you say corduroy, my teeth hurt a little bit because when it would rub together, it just makes my teeth hurt. They hurt right now. I I feel like for a for a phase that like there was corduroy that was like the original corduroy that was like the thinner kind of corduroy. And right. then like in the nineties, at some point it kind of came back again, but it was the wide fat corduroy. Hmm. You guys remember that? I, I don't remember that. I, don't I had some brown corduroy pants that my mom told me were cool and I believed her. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. Just like but. I believe my granddad with the gold nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Your family's fascinating. I want a backstory. I want a prequel. <laughs> Maybe someday. I'll fund the. I'll should fund we it. grade this movie? We definitely <laughs> should grade this movie. Now, why don't you go first? It's a B plus for me. It holds up. It's a lot of fun. There are a few things, you know, that I was like, okay, but I mean, B plus is a, is good. B plus is B plus especially is a for an grade. '80s movie. Mm -hmm. um, sorry if you guys did A's and I didn't do an A, but it's a B plus for sure. No problem. We we never shame for grades around here. Yeah. yeah. Out loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I, I think the B plus A minus range is, is right where this one lives for me too. I'd probably put it more in the A minus, but it's really good. Like you mentioned as an eighties movie, a lot of times you go back and you watch them and they don't hold up or they're incredibly more offensive than you thought they were when you watched them yeah. as a kid. And this one yeah. isn't either of those things. Like it's still really enjoyable to watch. Um, I was thinking about it as I was watching it again for the show it starts with the action and it just goes like, there's not a lot of downtime. There's not a lot of slow parts of the movie and um, it makes it fun. The music's fantastic. The acting is great. Yeah. It's only like an hour 45. So, and so much gets done. Like they yeah. found the treasure when there's like only an hour left. And so just yeah. remember filmmakers, not everything has to be three hours. Just saying. Yeah, I mean, we cared about all of the characters. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. invested. You know, there's some movies that are four hours long, and you could just kill everybody. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but not you, Lord of the Rings. The not you. Oh, no. Oh, heavens, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I said some. I didn't say all. I know. I know. <laughs> And I just want to make sure you kill half of them, and I care about I, all of them, and I cry. I just saw Lord of the Rings in the corner that he's getting a little nervous, thinking like, that maybe we were talking about him. Just want to let him know we're still we're still with you, Peter. We, we still love you, Lord of the Rings. That's right. Vigo Mortensen said he'd be into making another one. I know. I don't want him to, but I know. I love I Vigo Mortensen. Any. I don't want them don't to make the hunt another... for Gollum. No, neither do I, yeah. but I just thought I'd throw it out there. We need the okay, we need the prequel to Gollum. We don't. <laughs> Gracie, what's your what we do need is your grade. Yes. Um I nostalgia glasses A minus. Um non-nostalgia glasses still holds up. It's a B plus. Um yeah. but yeah, this is like just such a fun movie. And to go back and be like, wow, this had so much talent involved with it. And I told you guys the sad thing was is like I'm sitting there watching this movie. And I recognize the editor's name and I'm like, oh yeah, he looks familiar. And I pull it up and it's like, it's because he's Spielberg's editor for yeah. everything from Close Encounters. But I mean, from like Richard Donner to the, to the actors, to Cindy Lauper, it's just a fun eighties romp. It's just like, like I said, the kids are like in actual danger. 
that feels yeah. believable. It feels like as a kid, you'd be like, I could do these things. I could figure these things out. And yeah. I'd be able to find that treasure and sail on the boat. And that would just be cool. So yeah, yeah A minus B plus for me. So there you go. I feel like that puts this right in where it belongs. And honestly, when we're talking about an older movie like this, when you go back and you revisit these movies so often, they don't like getting, don't getting a B plus a minus range is really impressive. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy about that. So there you go. Goonies season five off to a great start season five, staying alive. Uh, we should do short circuits since we've started season just... five. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I haven't done it. Do I haven't seen that one in a long time. That day. one I'm afraid will not hold up like the Goonies. <laughs> you don't Maybe know it will. That. You don't know. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. We need to go revisit it. I'm guessing that one doesn't hold up too well. But What? Which Maybe one? Flight of the Flight Navigator. Navigator is really sad when you watch I it now. I love that movie. Is it? It's been a lot. I haven't seen it since like fifth grade. Yeah. I haven't seen it since. Sarah Jessica Parker and well, was it, I think wasn't that Paul Rubens did the voice. Yeah, he was yeah. the voice of the of the spaceship. Yeah. I think what makes it sad is just like as a kid, the spaceship was really cool and they were flying through space and everything else. And like as an adult, I get that like he came back and his like the oh, world yeah. went on yeah. without him. And anyway, that's right. That's right. And that would be really sad. So yeah. anyway. We, we don't know that we're going to talk about any of these movies, but maybe we will. Stay tuned. So what you're going to want to do is subscribe and click that bell to get notifications for when new videos drop or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so that you can get all of these great episodes or none of them. We're going to leave it up to uh, fate. See what happens. Keep you, keep you in suspense. Next, next, uh, next episode, we'll dive more into Jake's backstory. No, <laughs> nobody wants to hear that. I promise. Are you going to sing us out, Tracy, with a little Cindy Lauper? Good enough for you. It's good enough. It's a bop. It's a it is a bop. It is a bop. Yeah. I don't well, even know what you're singing. Until until next time, movies that make us never say die. <laughs>